Hey guys, welcome back to Gas Core Tech. My name is Gary, and it is finally time that I can share this project with you. I am super excited. This is Optimus. Autobots, transform and roll out. So overall, Optimus really wasn't that hard of a print. He's mostly just kind of boxes crammed together with a few specific angles here and there and a ton of chamfers. Seriously, so many chamfers. So I wasn't working directly off of any particular Optimus. He's probably closest to the Masterpiece toy, but ultimately this is just kind of my own design. There are a few details here and there that I either added or left out, so he's not really exact to any particular thing. I actually used some reference images from the, the Masterpiece toy and also from the original cartoon. So once I had my reference images, I mostly just went through and kind of figured out how tall each portion needs to be. And for that, I just kind of look at them comparatively. Like how tall is the chest compared to the head, compared to the legs, compared to the pelvis, that type of thing. And from that, I'm actually able to start with one piece, just pick a size, and then work my way out and get a full Optimus. So when I was creating sketches, I started with boxes, just kind of marking off the different big sections of his body. And from there, I just kind of went in and started refining the shapes little bit by little bit until I had the shape of Optimus. From there, it was just a process of extruding the shape out, making sure that the angles were there, making sure the widths were right, and then adding chamfers and all the various different details. It's actually kind of funny because this was one of the most intensive models that I'd ever created um, up to this point, but throughout the whole thing, I only used a couple of tools until I actually got into splitting him up, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Then I used some more uh, fancy tricks that I've learned along the way, but as far as actually creating creating the geometry and um, the features of Optimus. It was all just creating a sketch, extruding it, and then using the chamfer tool. So nothing too crazy there. There's just a lot that has to go on here. So it just took some time to nail down each piece. But this was actually a pretty fun process and I think it came out pretty good. Alright guys, well the model is completely done, I've split it all up, but first I kind of want to talk about the, the different thought processes that went into this model, because uh, it's gone through quite a few revisions actually, because I actually created this model, I think it was back in July or August. So it's been a very, very long time in the works. And originally we were just gonna do it like one of my normal models where I just create a static model in a pose um, and print it out, Chelsea paints it, then I just present it to you guys and give out the file if you guys wanted to do the same. 
But this being Optimus, it didn't feel right just doing the normal type of video that I do. I felt like it needed to have something special, um, something a little bit bigger. And a static pose just didn't seem to fit him well. So I decided to make him articulated. So he does actually have joints, they fit together, and will move just like an action figure would. And I will touch more on those joints, how I made them, um, and just a little more thoughts on those later in the video. But before we go any further, uh, no, this thing does not transform. And I know that's going to disappoint a few of you. Uh, I'm sorry. There were a lot of reasons that I didn't make him transform. I actually started to go down that path at one point, but there were two main reasons that I didn't do it. One, um, I'm just not skilled enough. I haven't really tried to do that type of thing, and I don't think I would have been able to do it justice. Um, and two, uh, just time. That Doing something like that would have made this project take exponentially longer, and as you know already, this project took a very long time. So I apologize, but I hope you guys find this cool anyway. But when it came down to actually printing him, we weren't sure how we wanted to do this, because he's very geometrically shaped and has a lot of small details, so it would be very difficult for Chelsea to sand, and it would be very easy easy to notice any like warping or um, layer shifting going on. So we didn't think that any of our current printers could really handle it and um, it was going to be very difficult for Chelsea to finish. So we actually started to go down the path of SLA. But as I'm sure the video title and thumbnail have already spoiled, you know that's not the case. I actually do have an Optimus head somewhere that's a, an SLA print. I might have actually thrown it away because it didn't come out very good. But it was around the time that we got the Arprusa Mark II S upgraded to with the multi-material unit, and I was kind of looking Optimus over, and I'm like, we could probably pull that off in the different sections that I have him split up into. Um, he could be printed using the four colors on the multi-material. So that is where we went with this. So I'm sure that will be very obvious um, in the print footage that I'm about to show, but that's not the only secret. We might have gone just a slightly bit bigger than our normal models for this one. Just slightly. You guys ready for this? Ah, he's friggin' huge! This is absolutely crazy, and yes, he is standing on his own. Um, so I'm gonna show you the showcase pictures, and I'm gonna put a little infographic at the end there, kind of showing you what filaments we used and how long it took to print. Here he is, guys. I can't believe it is finally time to show this off. I'm so happy. Um, this took forever to create, took forever to print, um, took a ton of filament, but it was all super worth it. Now, it's not 100% perfect. Um, first of all, the joints are made out of PLA, so I'm sure they are gonna wear like crazy, and the more I move this thing, I've already started to notice it a little bit, um, the looser those joints are gonna be. So I imagine um, over time, he's just gonna become really floppy. But the good thing is, is I designed him in a way that the joints can be easily replaced, 
And um, if you were printing one of these, uh, I made it. Th I made the joints completely separate, so uh, you can substitute your own joints if you can do better than I did. Which I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who can, because this was my first time doing anything with joints like this. And there were just two main kinds of joints, um, like the shoulders and the hips were ball joints. So I just have a ball and a socket, and I made them um, able to print without supports. So they just slide together, and the tolerances need to be super tight, like on the border of not being able to fit. I actually broke quite a few of these socket pieces trying to shove the ball into them but eventually I got a really tight fit and it actually works pretty well. I mean part of the drawback is that he's so big so there's quite a bit of weight on those joints but overall I'm pretty happy with it. The other type of joints are just um, cylinders put through holes and those are like the elbows, the knees, and the ankles. So those are pretty straightforward. They only need to bend on one axis um, so they just make sure the tolerances are tight there as well. But another benefit of making the joints completely separate is that you should be able to scale this to a bunch of different sizes. Now obviously there's a limit to how small you can go. Um, uh, there's, there's probably an upward limit, but I'd like to see you guys try to make uh, one of these bigger than I did. So you should just be able to scale all of the normal parts to um, whatever size you want. And then the joints, you'll just have to scale them a little bit more carefully to fit tightly into the rest of the print. And that'll just take some test printing. You'll have to print a little piece that you can figure out um, exactly how big it's going to be. Uh, slide it in, just see how tight it is, and then just adjust from there. That's really what I did with this. Alright, so I know a lot of you are going to be wondering, since this is a multi-material print, um, and a pretty hot topic around multi-material is the purge towers and how much filament it wastes. So I'm just going to talk a bit about how uh, this thing was to print. Um, as you can see, we got a few print failures here. This one was not super fun. The, the chest piece was by far the uh, longest print, so when this one failed, it wasn't super fun. Luckily, it failed decently early into it. This one was actually a mistake of my own. As you can see, it printed uh, perfectly, but I did not make this top part tall enough to actually fit into the joint. So that was a uh, pretty expensive and painful mistake. And that's where one of these purge towers goes to. As you can see here, there's just a bunch of test joints and stuff like that. Um, like I said, if you're going to print one of these, you're, you're probably going to have a few of these just to make sure that things fit super snugly. And you'll also see some tape here because um, when I was first using this, we were still having some issues with the uh, Prusa Mark II bed sticking. Um, the, the prints were starting to separate and I actually had an issue for a while where the perch towers would break off and mess up the print. So I was just taping them down and seem to do the trick. But since then we've got the problem figured out and I no longer have to do that. But as you can see this pile right here is all of the purge towers and I'm sure some of you will be surprised by this. Some of you are probably expecting more for just how a giant Optimus is. But one, um, I tried to optimize the model as much as possible so it's not doing unnecessary changes when it doesn't have to. And just generally the bigger you print things, the size of the purge tower doesn't change a lot. Um, obviously how tall you print things uh, makes a difference, but like this was for the body here, as you can see, um, since it's really, really wide, it doesn't really impact the size of this. And like these, for example, were the feet, just because the feet only have uh, a small color change down here and the rest is not. So they're just super tiny little guys. And actually some of this is infill, it's not even solid. So ultimately compared to Optimus, um, the amount of filament waste is pretty negligible. I might actually throw all of these onto a scale and weigh them just to see what the result of how much filament each of them used was. And I also wanna talk about what filaments we used. Um, we, all, we used almost exclusively filamentum. And now they didn't sponsor this, we bought uh, most of this filament ourselves. We actually did have a friend and fellow creator here on YouTube to, um, by the name of Chris. He runs the channel Practical Printing and he was one of the early people that we showed this project um, and he was super excited about it so he very generously offered to buy us a couple of rolls of filament. I believe he got us some Noble Blue and maybe a Rapunzel Silver. So he bought a couple, sent them over to us and we definitely ended up using them for this project. So it was a huge help. Thank you Chris and um, please check him out on his channel. Like I said it's Practical Printing. I will put a link down in the description and I think I can put something up in the eye in the corner. 
But other than that, we bought all of these spools ourselves. As for the reason we used filamentum, we just really, really like that filament. It prints beautifully, and this thing actually didn't print that well, but that was due to me not tuning the settings and stuff like that. I've never really been known to get amazing prints um, because I have Chelsea to do all the work for me, right? But that doesn't benefit me in something like this. But a lot of the defects and the printing imperfections you really can't notice because of how good the quality of the filament is. And if you want to know what any of these are, I will put it all down in the description, but check that infographic that I showed. I list all of the actual filaments and um, what I use for each different section. So I would say 95% of him is filamentum filaments. Um, the yellow, I believe, was hatchbox yellow just because we didn't have any filamentum yellow and we had some extra hatchbox laying around. So for these parts and up here, and then I believe the transparent yellow was also Hatchbox transparent yellow. I just thought that was a nice um, kind of look for this section of him. Because if you look at what he actually looks like, these are kind of a transparent glassy type look. And then lastly, his eyes. We did not have a filamentum color like that. We just had a leftover, I believe it was actually Robo, um, Robo filament and it's just kind of their uh, teal color. All right guys, well I am super excited to see what you guys think of this. Uh, let me know down in the comments. Also, let me know which which uh, Transformer you'd like to see next because I'm sure a lot of you would like to see some more guys like this and I I'm definitely willing to do that. I love this project. I'm sure I'll get quite a few requests for Megatron. I've already gotten a request from my brother to do Starscream because that was one of his favorites and I think Chelsea wants Bumblebee. So let me know what you guys want to see uh, down in the comments. I'll try to pick the one that I see the most comments about. All right, guys. Well, thank you for watching. Make sure you like and get subscribed. Um, you can ring that bell to be alerted whenever I put out new videos like this. And then that's going to be it for me, guys. Thank you for watching. And until next time, keep creating.